not the way. It's not the same for you, Mirren. Is it? It's not. People aren't getting flogged for you. People aren't killing for you. People aren't stretching their fucking neck out and literally putting on a chopping block for you. People aren't constantly being hurt because of you, because of your mistakes. Do you know how that feels? What on? What on did was selfish. It shouldn't be on you, and I'm absolutely certain that if he knew how much distress it caused you, he would feel an absolutely guilt rat that he did such a foolish thing. He was angry, and in the heat of the moment, he did something rash for someone he cared about. As everyone does, every once in a while. It's normal. So what do I do about this? Do I just stop caring about her? Now that is another issue entirely. Um, I'm obviously not the expert on this subject matter. I, I believe that love and being with someone, it's a two-way street. If you only have eyes for her, but she has eyes for multiple others, and that's something that you're not okay with, but she refuses to yield on, then... Honestly, in my eyes, it seems... I, I don't want to put words instead of its mouth, but... It's... Can I tell you a story? A short one. Let me fill up my drink first. And then I can tell you a story from my past. Do another one too? I would, yes. Oh, let me finish it. It's a dim feeling when you watch them from a distance, yet never get involved. It's like a window between the two of you, but one that they cannot see through. Uh, thank you, Gala. Tell me the story. Most of them never even believed it, even when they saw it. I... When I was young, Until now. I had, uh, I didn't have many friends, let's just say that. I spent most of my time in books, and losing myself in the world of the past. But one day, my family took on a ward, a charge if you would. A local silk farmer's son. He was kind to me. He reached out when others uh, shied me away. And I'm good with things. Of course. Uh, we grew close. He was my first true friend. And. Oh, sorry, I, um... My idea of knowing them was... Not really. The more recent um, years... 
And he Please fell in love with your sister. Sister? I don't have a sister. Your cousin. Um... Let's let me finish the story, all right? Right. I think I've heard it. Go ahead. What do you mean? Go ahead. What do you mean, Kyla? I just feel like I've heard this one before, but go ahead. <clears throat> well, then I'll make it short. Even shorter. Ah, oh, fill in the details. Listen, the long and short of it is, I spent a lot of effort, a lot of time, just trying to stay in the life of someone that I cared about, someone that I cared about deeply and knew would never return my actions. And it was damaging. It wasn't good for me. My health, my mind. I didn't hear this one. Well, it was a, my friend, of course. And you're right, he fell in love with my cousin. I was angry at first, uh, but I dared not reveal my affections. And then, well, I got used to it. I let myself believe that it, it would be fine as long as I still got to be friends with him. Then he had to disappear for a while, and um, I was devastated because I spent so much time worrying about someone who well, wouldn't worry about me in the same way. And I, I don't know. I, I'm, maybe there's no real lesson to this story. Wait, what did you say? Oh. I suppose what I'm trying to say is, it's your choice. If you really care enough, then do everything you can to keep what you. Uh, but if not, if you, if this brings you nothing but pain, cut it off before you become jaded and closed off. I already thought I was. <laughs> Uh, after well, clearly not. And... It's clearly not. I swore off all of that. <laughs> what I did. What I did. Not as easy. No, it's not. I said, uh, you clean up nicely. All right, your turn. I told you a terrible story. Uh, you to tell me a story. You left out the last part, though. What part? You found each other again. I don't know what you're talking about. Of course not. When I was younger, I... Okay, steady on. It's not gonna be that bad of a story. When I was a young girl in Gradio, um, I didn't really have much bother up and left before I knew him. And, uh, Mother didn't have much time for me. In fact, she resented me. So I've, I'd never really known care or love or affection. That's why I'm so... That's why I have this fucking quill in my boot. It's not so I can write, it's because I... I appreciate it. I... My mother despised me. She didn't really want anything to do with me. She blamed me for my father leaving. Um, I ended up just kind of being on the streets a lot of my life. Meeting people. Well, meeting a small group of people. Then, um... One day my mother was murdered. And I was alone. Completely. I met... I ended up being on the streets completely. I didn't have anywhere to go. 
turn to doing things that I, you know, unsavory things. And eventually, you know, I had a small group of friends, people, a new family, people that I trusted. There was like four of us in total. And one of them was a girl. And I fell hard, and she fell hard too. And it was good, it was really good. We had nothing, but we had everything at the same time. That makes sense. Um, and things went bad, and in order to save their own skins, they uh, threw me under the cart, so to say. And that was just before I left Gradio. Well, I loved ended up shooting me in the back with a fucking crossbow. Well, if you want a proper explanation, it is that was the last time I saw of them. Um, an who is, um, and I told myself after that I wouldn't let anyone get that close to me. I wouldn't let anyone be in that position. And here I fucking am. <laughs> Attached to so many more fucking people. That could easily just... So when Sarah tells me that everyone dies in the end and there's no fucking point getting close to people, I understand it. And not the same way she says it. Tyler, no one can get through this life alone. And what's the point if you're living your whole life cold and miserable and detached from anything going on around you? The whole point of this entire journey is... But without pain, there's no happiness. I'm tired of being in pain. When do I get my happiness? I'm sorry, it's... I don't know, something I think I, I shouldn't yeah. know about yet. It's easy to say, but... Well, you live long mm. enough, probably, so I'm close to I know you've been through a lot. It's a second to her sort of thing. Uh, yes, yes, of course. Anyways. But... Maybe there is no such thing as happiness, or... <laughs> maybe Sarah is right. But... I don't think that she is. I've seen so much good come out of so many people, and... I'm sure I've seen terrible things, and you have too, but... Look at us right now, a, a drow and an elf, having a conversation over drinks about girls. How much longer? I'm of the mind that... You shouldn't be. There is a saying... Uh, roughly translates to should not be sad that it's over but be glad that it happened it still fucking hurts everything ends yes and of course it hurts it, it'll never stop hurting but there's beauty uh, that comes along with the the downsides of the pain. That said, you shouldn't subject yourself to a situation that makes you miserable. And the thing around Cerevith makes you miserable. Well, and you should do what you think is best for you. I don't know what's best for me. I haven't. But... So long now. I mean, I barely know who I am. Oh, Tyler. For what it's worth, I at least am. Glad to have gotten to know you. Do I see a full hand up here? Oh, yeah, no, it's like punch marks. Like, like, I'm sorry. Got it. Well, I'm glad. It's wrapped up. Sure. And I'm sorry for whatever pain. I see that. Is that a. 
Oh, stop it. I'm young and I signed up to feel pain. Most of it's not even coming from you, if you could believe it. Hmm. So, sounds like a I sad, lonely conversation. We have room for a sad, lonely man. Only if you have girl troubles. It's okay. No. No. That I don't. Any woman I was interested in is very much nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the past. <clears throat> I see. Well, we are having conversations of, um... Love and life and <clears throat> hardships. Right Love, life, and hardship. Nothing, right. yes. <laughs> Can I ask a question that might sound condescending, but I do not mean it as such? Of course. <laughs> Compared to what you see now, may I ask what a noble would know of hardships? Well. I'm not going to pretend to have any experience with Fuck. Uh, what most common it's fucking crying, getting my nose all basis. fucked up. Hey, folk! Uh, I guess I didn't have like to do to stuff? Alone, to, feel lonely <sighs> to feel like no one in the world that can help you out of the situation you're in. I don't know, I'd like to prove that that's wrong. Everyone out there has somebody. That puzzle piece. That's the city. Chat, roll it 20. Sounds silly, I thought it was. But then you come across somebody who compliments the entirety of who you are in a way that you never expected. Terrible creatures. Almost like they're filling a void that was there and you didn't know about it. I don't really mean just about emotion, but somebody who just can very easily keep you going without even trying. It's almost like we are born with a piece missing intentionally. Once wonder, you find that person, it feels like a key to a lock, I tell you. It helps to hide They're out there. As he Gotta find them. Pushing forward. Sure you will. Uh, yep. Not for me. Not... <sighs> I'm fine. <laughs> My current situation, thank you. I'm sure. Yeah, you get a crazy bastard, eh, Lord? <laughs> hey, you two Ford master. Teasing you, Garandas. What do you do when the... You... When the piece that you thought you had ends up fucking shooting you in the back and leaving you for dead? That's one of the scariest things about involving yourself in something like that. Definitively, love is... Essentially giving somebody the power, by definition, to be the only one who can unravel it. Or so I've learned over the years. It's... You have to be careful with who you give that kind of power. Not everyone out there is bad or evil. In fact, I'd say they are the minority. Well, at least when it comes to love. But... Has to be someone you trust. Separate and discreet. Otherwise, it's a mistake. Perhaps they just need to be safe. And we learn. Do trust them. <laughs> Maybe. I don't. Everyone I love is gonna die, and I'm gonna bury them. That's life, my boy. That is life. I suppose I could counter that with you will live far longer than I. That's the problem. And you'll see far more than I. So you will have to be much stronger than I. But with experience, no matter how painful comes wisdom and understanding. I've never thought that long life is a privilege. I've thought of it more as a curse. Life is beautiful, being able to experience things no matter how simple, and when it's gone, it's, it's 
gone. So yeah, living longer will be harder for you, I'm sure. You'll see terrible things, you'll experience awful things, but my god. You'll see beautiful things too. Things that others will miss. Things that the more short-lived will never take for granted because they missed it. Because they did not spend as much time looking at it. It is a burden, but... No one ever learns or becomes better without making mistakes or being in pain for so that they live. There's no rush. At all. You have the entirety of your life. If you don't figure it out now, you might figure it out tomorrow, and so on and so forth. And you're not going to stay at Ledford forever. Let's be honest. This place is fleeting for you, I'm sure. You have an entire world out there. You could find what you're looking for anywhere outside of these boundaries. <laughs> Just one day you need to decide. I want to know. Pick up your things and go. As long as your legs work, as long as you have water to drink, food to eat, you can go anywhere you want. Stay away from places that will cause you trouble. And people that you know are bad. You've got a good gut. You can figure that out. I've just been thinking to myself, considering that you could find yourself somewhere else. Ledford's not for you. It's too dark here, too grim. And I'm a very <laughs> dapper and spry person, am I? Yeah. You are. When you're not in the darkest corner of the tavern drinking. It's kind of my thing, on. Can't be, man. It's been mine before you. I just want to be happy. There's no rush to figure it out. You and me both. <laughs> I had a conversation like that earlier, trust me. Happiness is hard to come by. When you have a moment on, I'd like to talk with you, Jeremy. Oh. Yeah. It's frightfully important. This is a bit of a problem. Is he covered in blood? Ah, uh, we, I've, me... He has been, it's awesome from the fight. I saw some random creature coming out <clears> of the graveyard. I'm not sure what it was. They're going to fight in that. There was some weird creature. It came out of the graveyard. <sighs> and it's probably over Dompe there to trying to fight him. I don't think it was Dompe. I'm sure they would have recognized it. I was with the dwarves and the guard. Huh. Oh. Constantly has a way with words. He does, and I hate it. Check it out, I suppose. Before we get to business. <laughs> How are you doing, Cat? I see. Hey, was that fun, Cat? Was it fun? Was fun? Mm. You sit in the corner. Yeah. Complain about fun. love. No. Complain about life. I care about you. Don't. That's the problem. I know. But you pushing others away isn't going to do anything. It's only going to hurt safe. you. I know it may be painful. Me don't matter. Don't lose people, but <laughs> being alone is even worse. You don't want to go through your entire life alone. Even if you do lose people along the way, 
is better to have loved and lost than to never have loved at all. Anyway. Take it from the man who spent basically all of his life alone. It's not all it's cracked up to be. Unless you really like books. Go on, dying for you. Let people do what they Who want. Who said that? If people are willing to risk their life for you, that is something that... It's stupid. ...is painful. It's not, though. It means that... Well, then, we're stupid. Them. What of it? Damn. They are stupid. You have to give it to them. Let us be stupid. <laughs> Let us. Do you know if this, uh, because we care so about weak. you. And you pushing us is. away isn't going to do anything. We are going to continue mm. to be stupid, and you can either be stupid with us, and make mm. sure we aren't too stupid, or no, I believe she's gone push us bed. away and let us see. And be alone. Yes, and you don't want that. Ceased. We're here, whether you like it or not. Can't get rid of us that easily. <laughs> and and she's going back home. I hate how chipper everyone is. <laughs> I know. just wish I could join her, but, well, <sighs> no. But, Don't you mean. have to have some kind of, uh, really chipperness. <laughs> well, not yet, at least. Come back to the dreariness of this fucking town. <laughs> right, Tarek? Ledford's a shithole. I've realized that since my first day here. <laughs> but. But you have to have some level of positivity. <laughs> hmm. It's a shithole, but it's... Be nice to it's yourself. It's better than someone. It's... Definitely. Don't ever stop being nice. The world needs more nice people. Mm. You know? Mm. If I could call anywhere a second place, second home, I think I'd call this my second home. Sure, sure, sure. It has its troubles, and sure, I may have uh, gotten some troubles of my You're a little too drunk over there, Kylie. <laughs> but um, I just hit my face on the carpet. Uh, uh, it's, fucking it's, it's a, I always hurt. It's a lot better than most of the other places I've been to. <sighs> too true. Hmm. Kyla. I... I understand your apprehension. <coughs> Trust me. I really, really do. But I have to ask. There are people here who are willing to take risks for you. Who, when you disappear behind those those walls, the thing that supersedes all other thoughts is your well-being, your safety. And that is our right to decide. Because we care. Because whether you like it or not, we care. You may not think it. You may not accept it. But I can speak for myself and say you have a profound impact on me. You're tired as always, Mr. Soma? Oh. Yes, yes, I am. I want to be there for you. Uh, another busy day and if that makes me stupid, then... Mm. Well, call me the biggest idiot in Ireland. Hell, in Alzera. <laughs> I could live with that. I'd I just be proud to. As would I. Very little of the metal supplies that we have. I fear for the worst. 
The world is a cruel place. We both know this well. We all know this well. Well, they both know that battle. And even Ledford is not free of strife. That's not going to happen. And struggle. Well, we've had monstrous mushroom creatures attack us. We've had thieves attack us. But it's very, it's very much the same Quite out possibly there. Possibly we may be unlucky for another. And I'd rather struggle through all of that here mm. with the people who mean the most to me. I only what? ask that you let us. Whatever comes our way, I believe. Do the same for you. I'll mostly be. It is ultimately selfish. I know. Using other methods to save people rather than just using but, my own human methods, because like I said, soon, even with me being as a surgeon, it is our right, right, right to decide that we care. I will and it is your right to decide if you do. To do not. be a surgeon, I must be. So I'm not telling you what the right choice is. As it pains me to Only that we make our own. Because you're our friend. <sighs> I just wish I could do more. And thus you can. Simple. Okay. That's all I want to say. No training. Maybe a little bit of experience. I'm probably there. going to be cutting in. Good night, both of you. See you in the morning. Have a good night, Kat. Make sure to be there for my lessons. Mm hmm, <laughs> you had better be. Yes, of course. <laughs> How are you doing right now? Good night. How is your, good night, Kat. your right arm? How is it feeling? <laughs> it hasn't acted up since then, so I should be fine. Good. You keep this up within the next day or so, it should be back to where it was before. Yeah. I can move really. Got your eye on something, Tarek? Not too much. Uh, what? Though. Um. Like I said. Uh. <laughs> Tarek. Oh. The, oh. Oh, okay. oh, right. Well. That was me. good. All right, Anyways, I'm going to go for a as walk. For the two of you, just wanting to check up on the both of you after that event that <sighs> happened with the <sighs> super gambling brawl. Uh, I did not be involved in the fighting. Thank you, though. Uh, but everything happened. All right, then. Happening, I, I want to know everything. Oh. Hmm. Well, either way. Good night to the rest of you, and wish you all a safe trip. Thank you, Tony. Uh, and how are you so doing? Doing? Good to uh, Cave, uh, I'm doing well. Hmm. Oh, you got your letter out. Fuck are you? Fuck are you? Coward.
Leute. Fuck you. When your fucking dog's barking, when you're trying to be dramatic. <laughs> Pretty high. What are you looking at? Oh. Tower. See Mirandel's lessons are paying off? I'm gonna head to bed, so good night, you two. Cool. Fine. Um, we are Linda Smith. Say what? Are we are uh, Linda Smith. Huh. I'll at least teach you how to smelt ore, surely. Okay. We go now or what later? You can go now if you want. <laughs> it 
looks so bright. Hmm. Probably not the best for your eyes, but... Right indeed. Alright, let's tell me what to do and I'll help. Well, the first part, which is the simplest bit, is the iron ore that you see on top of the furnace. You put it in the embers. We already have the molds in place. You just put those little bastards into the furnace itself. you do it carefully, don't burn your hands. It is just go. Just put them into the molds, you should see them. <clears throat> They're already in place, Kyla. <laughs> yep. Take the mold. Put it on the embers itself. Ow! 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 Go mm. careful, careful, you're all right. Ow. Grab the calipers. Ah, calipers. Those are the ones, the caterpillars. Caterpillars. All right. Now, go to the other side over there, the first torch. And use the calipers to grab onto the molds holding the liquid metal. Grab it by the handle using the calipers. Good. Pick it up. Bring it carefully, arm's distance. Don't spill it on yourself. Bring it over to the mold. The same mold you just put in there. Now use the calipers to tip it and pour the molten metal into the mold. Slowly, slower, uh, slower uh. than that. That's all right. Good, good. Oh. Perfect. You don't want to do it too fast, but you want to do it quick enough where you don't burn your hands. It is a metal tool. Ow. Oh. Just look at your hands, you silly boy. Put the calipers down. Clap. Now over on the desk, there'll be a sword mold for a blade. Grab the blade mold. There you are. Prep that by putting it in the furnace itself. That'll be for our second blade. Good, all right. Grab the other blade mold it's on the table, the one you just grabbed it from. that back. Put that on the anvil itself so you have a flat surface. Take the other molten metal, use the calipers. Clapless. The second dose that's in there, so grab the calipers. <laughs> mm -hmm. Grab that other pan full of metal, bring it over to the anvil. Pour it in carefully over there, inside of the mold, placed on the end. Careful, slowly. There you are. Steady hand. All right, well, no more careful than that. All right. Good. Excellent. That's the whole thing. All right, put that tray back in the forge, and then you can put the calipers down. Go ahead. 
then wait for that molten metal to get a little harder. But we don't want it to get too hard. Once it's too hard, then we have to heat it up again. I don't know if it's hard. It'll cool. Okay. It'll start to... No, never do that. You'll burn your finger right off. The flesh will bubble and just drip off your finger. The fuck? This is dangerous, Arn. Well, that's why we're gloved. What? <laughs> Spare of gloves on the desk. It's my other pair. So big. Still protection. All right, that should be good enough. Now comes the somewhat easier part. They put the, they move my thing. Bastards. Fuck you need that little hammer, that's for sure. Right then. Now that the blade has sufficiently cooled a bit, that mold will only give it a general shape. It's by no means a finished blade. Oh, Kyla, come back from the ceiling, please. There you are. What? No. Don't worry about it. The large hammer there by the anvil. Grab it. See the flat side? Yeah. I want you to take this for reference, one of the finished swords. Go ahead and put it somewhere you can look at it clearly. See how it has a bit of a seam in the center of the blade, and it tapers to the left and the right to form the cutting edges? These are very big words. Line in the center of the blade. Mm. Mm -hmm. And then the metal, so it's not square, it's on a slant, an angle, a hill. You see that? Mm -hmm. So it gets sharp at the sides. That mold that's on the anvil, the blade is very square. But the metal is still hot. So you tap down the sides to start giving it its shape. Very rudimentary. So using your glove, hold the temporary hilt and cross guard. You can spin the sword around if you must. <laughs> and start trying to match the edge that you see on that blade. I think I missed. There'll be sparks. <laughs> when you make contact, ah. there'll be sparks, but don't worry about it. It's normal. All right. And I just kind of hit it till it looks good. All the way to the tip. <laughs> along the edges. <laughs> there you are. Make sure you overlap each print. So heavy. Careful now. Yeah. It's a heavy hammer. Five pound sledge. What is pounds? Right, good. In Gradia, we use kill. There you are. Start working on the other side. Good. So is this what the banging is that I hear? Yes, it is. You'll be able to take my job and I'm done. I'm obsolete now. Don't say that. <sighs> Just old. Come on, you 
young, I think. I don't, I, I don't know. My, how young am I meant to be? Okay, now what? Do it again, other side. This is what you do all day is hit this stuff. That's part of the job. That we're making axes. That's something I'll do myself, so now I'm letting you make your sword. Okay. But my sword? Why? This is gonna be a horrible sword, huh? Won't this cost a lot of money? Oh, can I come back later and then hit it again when I'm sober and make it good? My boy, you won't remember this tomorrow. Okay. Go on, flatten those sides again. I've been flattening the sides. <laughs> it's a process that you have to do over and over again. <laughs> Good. <laughs> you get some muscles. <laughs> Flip it over. More. The left edge. Focus on the left edge. There you are. Overlap every strike. Every strike. <laughs> That's good. Good. Take the calipers. Use it to pick up the sword. <laughs> the water tank that's right next to you on the ground. Dunk the blade in. Like me. <laughs> sure. I'll let you have that. Now, calipers can go down. You can touch it with your hands. It's cold now. Now, we remove the temporary cross guard. Go ahead and carefully, with the gloved hand, grab the base of the blade above the cross guard with the blade to the sky. With your dominant hand, grab the hammer. And start slowly on both sides, alternating. Knock the cross guard off, because we're going to put a real one on it. Good. Careful. A few more hits. And... Ow! Perfect. This is hit my right. thumb. Ow. Well, the cross guard still came off, so that's good. <sighs> All right, put it back down on the end, though. Table over there in the corner that has already pre made cross guards, hand guards, and pommels. Grab one. Anyone? Whichever one you want. Uh huh. Bring it on over. 
Grab the blade the same way, but with the point to the ground. Kind of fit it over the top, along the long bar of the blade. Slide it into the handguard. There you are. Grab the hammer now, and the opposite sides of the cross guard beat it back down into place. Carefully, keep it even. Good. And give it one good tap at the pommel. Perfect. Good lad. All right, hand it here. Let me see it. Metal particles all over the bloody thing. It's bent. Not it's terrible. Bent like a... You know. How someone might lean to the left, so to speak. It's not pronounced. It will work. You can just say you're from the east. Cross guard's not bad. It's on there tight. Well, you'd be lucky to cut a block of fucking cheese with this. Take it. Come sit here. There's both a hand crank and a foot pedal. I use the foot pedal because I'm a lazy bastard. Go ahead and start using the pedal. There you are. So while you keep pumping that, the grindstone will keep moving. Take the blade, hold it horizontally, and in a motion that looks kind of like this, back and forth, sharpen the blade. Starting at the base by the cross guard, moving <coughs> all the way to the end. There you are. It's a bit of a rhythmic movement. <laughs> Now I understand how blacksmiths get so big. It's a very involved job. But one could argue it keeps you busy. You've been doing this your whole life? No. For about four years. Not very long. No. I just learned fast. The good teacher, too. He was a teacher. An older man. Same. Didn't have... <laughs> Funny. He didn't have a family. But he had a daughter. And loved her dearly. And, uh... Seemed like a very godly man. was one of the actual, uh, <laughs> actually probably the best blacksmith I've ever met. Man finished massive orders in merely days rather than weeks. Never heard anyone complain about his work. But, uh, my first ever sword, I got it from him. Keep it on an angle. You don't want to shave down the center, you want to shave down the edges. There you are. Don't forget the tip. Gotta put it at a bit of an angle. You might have to grip the blade a little bit. Remember, you have gloves, so you should be all right. Kind of in a roundish motion pushing forward against the wheel to get the tip there you are good 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 excellent now flip it over let's get the other side almost done there you are 
same pressure. Good. Final test. Mm -hmm. Take your glove off. Put a little pressure on the tip. If it cuts your finger, it's sharp. Mm-hmm. Good. That's a sharp looking sword. Cut all the cheese in the world now. Ah. Can. Go on, stand up over there. <laughs> Give a few swings, see how it feels. Different. No, sir. It was weighty from the other ones that I've used. Probably could use more shaved off the edges, and the blade is a little bit larger than usual. You didn't tap it down as much as one usually would. To be expected. Not bad for a first blade, however. Oh, it is bent. <laughs> Not too terribly. I can bend metal. Ah, you can. Well, congratulations, Kyla. You have forged your very own sword. I made this. You did. Your own time and effort. Sweat. Honest work. Is that what it feels like every time you make one? <laughs> it wears off. Yeah. But the first one. That you don't forget. Where you made it, what you made it with, who you made it with. And how long it lasted. Everything is temporary, huh? My boy. If everything lasted forever that we loved and cherished and enjoyed, it wouldn't really have worth anymore, would it? We'd grow used to it, we'd have it all the time. It's the fact that things are gone in a blink that makes them precious. Important. I suppose. So, even if it seems like it's going to cause you pain in the future or one day, when you know you have to say goodbye, remember that it is a part of life. And remember, the sorrow is worth the happiness that you otherwise never would have felt. Keep things like that close to you. Remember better times, good moments, when things are their most dark. Because no matter how black the night is, there'll always be a morning. There'll always be light. Don't take care of it. Don't lose it. Make sure you keep your eyes on. My pleasure, my boy. If nobody teaches you how to do it, you'll skewer yourself. Right. <laughs> Not enough people trying to kill you. Poor, what's one more? Right? Well, I prefer that you don't count yourself among those. <laughs> be careful with your curved sword. 
Curved swords. <sighs> okay. Um, well. Can I help you with these heads then? I don't think I'll be sleeping tonight. The axe heads? Mm. Yeah. Okay. You can. It's a different process, and I'll show you all about it. Of course. 